Welcome back to D Max Man Gaming. I'm your host, D Mac, and here we believe gaming is a lifestyle, not a hobby. Welcome back, guys. It's so good to be doing another video for you guys and to give you an announcement. Me and the Max Gaming did cover the E3 for E3 week. We just weren't able to upload the videos, but to let you know right now, we will be uploading all them videos this week and next week. All the E3 covers. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell on because we got a lot of cool content from E3 coming out this week and next week. For you guys to check out. But today's topic we is Microsoft and Phil Spencer. And the reason why we talk about Microsoft and Phil Spencer today is because there's been some controversy going over Phil Spencer and Microsoft lately in the news. One of my friends in the gaming community kind of sent me a link to this article that kind of gave me a, a summary of what's been going on. And I decided to make a video on it because I think it's important. Now, what is all this controversy about with Microsoft and Phil Spencer? Because of what Phil Spencer said in the blog post that got people upset. Half of the gaming community to be exact. He stated in the blog post article that Xbox Live is not a free speech platform. And when you talk about free speech, you talk about something that is very dear to Americans. We really appreciate and love our First Amendment rights to say what we want to say and not be criminalized or penalized for it. That's what being an American is all about. It's just as important as bearing arms to all Americans in the United States. And we take our First Amendment rights very seriously. And when a company like Microsoft says that your free speech is not allowed on our platform can be very controversial and very arrogant and can anger a lot of people. So I understand why I have the gaming community is upset. But as I started reading the article, I understand what it, what he meant by that. And what he meant by that is totally different than how people are taking it. So today I wanted to be, um, wanted to be a difficult advocate and kind of explain to you why people are upset, but what Phil Spencer was saying is not as bad as people take it to be. It's just the word, the way he said it offended a lot of people. So let's get started. So first of all, when you talk about free speech, you talk about something that's, like I said before, it's important to all Americans. It's something that I love about being an American, that I have the ability to say what I want to say and not be criminalized for it or penalized for it unless I'm, unless I'm trying to defamate someone's character. Then the legal actions can be taken. But on the other hand, a company like Microsoft has the legal right to um, create rules and regulations for their people that use their service to follow. And if they don't, they can be terminated. And that's something that they have a legal right to do. Just like with Sony and the censorship and things like that. They have a legal right to protect their brand, their reputation. And if they feel like some people that's using their service is causing problems for them, where it's making them look bad, it's, it's, it's ruining their brand, it's ruining their reputation, they have every legal right to take action to stop that. And I think that's what Phil Spencer is getting at with online toxicity in the online gaming world. It's something that's been going on since the beginning of gaming. A lot of people feel like it's just trash talk, people messing around, blowing off steam. But sometimes some of the things that these people say is very very harsh and they harass you in many ways. They can dox you, they can swat you, they can send messages after messages, even after you sent a complaint to some of these platforms like Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. That's a process that has to be done. And as the process is being done, they're still able to create another account and continue harassing things like that. And in this article, Phil Spencer was trying to say that him and his team feel like this is important for them to get right. They want to improve the support that they give you, the users for their platform to be able to protect themselves from toxic people, from people that are messed up, that are sad, miserable people, that just only want to bring other people misery. And they have a right to do that. They have a right to protect their brand, their reputation. And if they feel like this is something that's important to them, who are we to judge them or criticize them for it? But when you use the word free speech like that, you can offend a lot of people because you talk about something that's dear to all Americans as much as bearing arms. So I can understand the half of the gaming community being upset by it and feeling like that's not something that he needs to worry about. Toxicity has always been a part of get online gaming. It's something that people need to get used to or to stop playing it. And there are certain features that a lot of these platforms have to help you combat it. But all Microsoft is trying to do is improve on that. Like one of the recent one of the things they did was the club that you can um, create on Xbox Live, where you can create a club and have specific rules and regulations for members to follow, and you can moderate how they behave. And whoever don't follow the rules get kicked out of the club. That way, people can be social with each other online and meet people like themselves to play. And a lot of people talk about how Phil Spencer is fake; he lies all the time. I've been an Xbox Live um, fan for a long time. I have been an uh, Xbox Live subscriber for almost 10 years, and I've watched all Microsoft E3s with my Phil Spencer in it, and not one time in 
all of that time that he ever outright lied to me in the gaming community. He always been upfront about what he's doing, what he want to do, and how he feels about everything going on in the gaming industry. And I've always respected him for that and admired him for that. And I feel like if this is something that he feels is important to him, I believe him. Why? Because I have played with Phil Spencer on Xbox Live before. We have set up there and played matches together. We didn't talk. I'm sure he gets hundreds of matches a day when he's online and he can't um, respond to all of them. But I have played matches with him. We have played games together. I see him a lot of times on my Xbox Live feed. He is a really amazing guy. And he is a true gamer. And I respect him because he's only trying to... To keep to improve on what he loves to do, he wants to improve on online experiences so more people can socialize, more people can meet more new people and expand their horizon. And I think that's something that we all want to strive for to become more inclusive in our world because the internet culture is very vile and very nasty at times, but it also has its positive sides. And I think that Phil Spencer and Microsoft just want to do something they feel is important. Now, how he went about it to me was wrong. But he stated in the article, and I'll have a link to this article that my friend sent me in the description box below if you guys check out for yourselves, that he knew he was going to rattle some people. He knew he was going to upset some people when he said what he said. And that's how bold he's being right now by saying something like that. That Xbox Live is not a free speech platform. That you can't come on Xbox Live and harass and dox and squat people just because you're having a bad day. And I think that's something that we should all get behind. But I do understand people's feelings about how they pay for a service to access to play games and to do things like everybody else. And now you're telling them how they need to um, behave themselves on your platform. If you if you don't, they get terminated. I can understand why that could be frustrating to some people that are toxic. But that's the whole point. It's to combat toxic behavior. It's to stop people from being toxic online. So people can have a great experience. Now, I, I, I have to state this because... I've been playing games for, since I was young, and I did a online. I played a lot of online games as well, not as much as I used to. And I have to say, I don't always run into a toxic player every time I load up my Xbox. And every time I get online, I don't always run into a toxic player. There are some people that so there's some toxic players that blatantly target certain people, and every time they see them online, they go after them. And that's what Phil Spencer was trying to combat. And I feel that he's doing. I feel that this is something that he feels it's important because he feels like gaming is a unified force for good. And just hearing the words is inspiring. Now, you guys can feel how you feel about Phil Spencer, but I respect the man and I look up to the man because I've seen him all the time online, hanging out, talking with the, with the gamers in the gaming community, expressing how much he appreciates our support and love of, of Xbox and Microsoft. And he's very appreciative. And I don't feel like it's an act. I don't feel like it's an act at all. And he has certain people he play with all the time on certain games. And I talk with some of these people, and they say they have great conversations with him, and they talk and have a lot of fun. He's just a human being like the rest of us, and he just wants to improve on a, improve on a messed up world. And he's doing that by combating toxicity in online gaming. And that's something that a lot of people feel like is something that we shouldn't be focusing on. It's something that... It's there because it's supposed to make you stronger. It's supposed to improve your character. Life has all types of trials and tribulations. I, I understand that. And there are tools that you have to learn growing up as an adult to how to combat that. But if a platform that you love and that you support wants to help you along by giving you more resources to combat it, why stop them? And why give them a hard time about it? I, like I said before, I've been a long-time live, Xbox Live subscriber. I've been with them for almost 10 years, and they have always done me right. And I have support for what Phil Spencer was saying. But I do not like the way he came about it. He, he was too blunt with what he was saying. And this is why I feel like he upset a lot of people in the gaming community. Not on what he's doing, but how he how he approached the situation and expressed what him and his team is trying to do. Because it makes it look like he's trying to be a social justice warrior. And Phil Spencer, trust me, is not a social justice warrior. He has things that he's passionate about that he feels that needs to change. And he has things that... He feels that are, not, that are not that big of an issue. He's just a human being like the rest of us. And I feel like that Microsoft is trying to improve online gaming for the better. And I think that that's something that we should support him on. Now, what I don't like about what he did was how, I mean, that was really blunt and really transparent. He was just saying that he knew he was going to rattle some people's defenses. I mean, when they developed the, um, the club, like I said before, it was to help people socialize with online, with on, with online gaming and to allow you to meet people that you want to play with for the, in the games that you want to play on. And they're just trying to prove upon that by 
um, opening up the um, parent control system and allowing people to have resources to them for all users to have the same type of system in place for parent control for kids. Take that system, alter it, and rebuild it for everyone to use to combat toxic online gaming. And I think that's a, something that is really amazing, something that we should really be looking forward to because it's supposed to be um, announced before the end of this year. And I'm excited for it. And I don't feel like Phil Spencer is being a social justice warrior. And I feel like he's a man that's just trying to do his part to make this world a little bit better than how he found it. And I support that. And that's just my opinion about it. I know you guys have your own thoughts about it. I know some of you guys in the comment section is going to say that I'm caving or things like that. But that's just how I feel. And I'm being honest with you that Phil Spencer has always been a upfront guy. He's always did his best to improve gaming for the Xbox community, and I appreciate him for that. And this is just another way of him improving Xbox Live. And I, I support it 100%, but I don't like the way he came about it, though. But that's what my thoughts about the whole situation. You guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you feel like Phil Spencer's doing the right thing, or do you feel like he's just trying to be an SJ warrior because that's what's popular? Or do you feel like Xbox is going to fail anyway, so he's trying to do anything to get publicity onto his platform? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to see it in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for sending it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps out the channel. Make sure you share. also helps out as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. To know if I will a lot more content. Because as I said before earlier in this video, we got a lot of cool E3 coverage coming this week and next week for you guys to check out. My name is DMAC. You've been watching DMAC's Man Gaming. I'll talk to you later.